What's up? Today I'm going to show you how to draw a jungle or tropical rainforest scene. This is an awesome project for elementary school kids, but honestly, adults will love it too. This project is inspired by the work of post-impressionist French artist Henri Rousseau, who became famous for painting tropical jungle scenes. During his life, he worked as a tax collector and painted more as a hobby. His artwork initially received a lot of criticism, actually, but his unique style eventually became very famous and sent waves throughout the art world. While he never got to visit an actual jungle or rainforest, he drew inspiration from local botanical gardens. Okay, I'm first gonna share a couple templates with you. Feel free to pause and take a screenshot of these. I recommend looking at these images while you make your drawing. Now, I'm gonna walk you through the drawing process. Here are a couple different types of palm leaves that you can draw. Draw several slightly curved diagonal lines that slant down towards the edge of your paper. Now draw a long oval shape around these lines. Trace back around this oval shape, making triangular indentations. Then go back and erase the pencil marks where the indentations are. Try drawing at least a couple palms this way. You can also draw a different style of palm by tracing around the oval and making round wavy indentations. After you've drawn the wavy indentations, just remember to go back and erase your pencil marks where the indentations are. Now let's add some split leaf philodendrons. Draw several hearts clustered together in one area of your paper. Then draw a soft line through the middle of each heart. Now trace around each heart shape, making long wavy indentations that move towards the center line. You can add several small holes near the center of the leaf to make it look a bit more realistic. When you're finished drawing, go back and erase your pencil marks where the indentations are. Okay, if you're feeling brave and you wanna try another leaf, here's another style. Start on one edge of your paper and draw a couple curved diagonal lines that slope downwards. Now round the ends and make the bottom tip slightly pointy and connect the bottom side back to the base. Trace back over the bottom edge of the leaf, making several triangular indentations. Then go back and erase your pencil marks where you made the indentations. Let's take a break from drawing plants and add a river in our picture. I'm going to measure four finger widths up from the bottom edge of my paper. Right here, I will add a straight-ish line going across my paper. About three finger widths above this line, I'm adding another line that runs parallel straight across the paper. This will be my river. I'm going to frame the top of my drawing by adding some tree leaves. For this, I'll use a simple rounded diamond shape Try clustering your leaves together and making them overlap. Now I'm gonna add some vines. For this, I'm drawing several long sloping lines that move across my paper. I'm tracing next to each line with a second parallel line to make my vines look a little bit thicker. Now let's add some animals. I'm not going to go into too much detail about drawing the animals because you can look at the drawing template that I made for you. But as you can see, I'm drawing a toucan perched on a vine and a snake wrapped around another vine. I'm adding a monkey hanging upside down from their tail. A jaguar lurking in the water and I'm adding a crocodile swimming behind the jaguar. I recommend trying to add at least one or two animals to your picture. Just remember to have fun and keep it simple. 
Now that I'm done adding some animals to my picture, I'm going to fill in the additional spaces with plants. I'm adding some long blades of grass in the foreground and some more blades of grass on the other side of the river. Notice how the blades of grass on the other side of the river are smaller because they're farther away. To draw a fern, I am drawing several curved lines that fan outwards. Then I'm going to draw a wavy bubble around each of these lines. And here's another type of fern that you can draw. Notice here how I'm drawing several stones along the far bank of my river. I'm adding clusters of lily pads floating on the river using simple oval shapes and adding a few water lilies as well. Once I'm happy with my drawing, I'm going to trace over my pencil marks with Ultra Fine Sharpie. I would say this part is totally optional. If you do outline with the Ultra Fine Sharpie, be sure to go back and erase your pencil marks afterwards. Now, whenever you're ready, you can start adding color to your picture. I'm using alcohol-based markers, but you could just as easily use Crayola markers, crayons, or colored pencils. Whatever you decide to color with, you may want to experience, you may want to experiment with blending colors. For example, try using a light green to color in the middle of your palm leaf and a darker green to color along the edges. Then see if you can blend the two colors together. Notice here how I'm blending two different colors together when I color in my tree canopy leaves at the top. I suggest leaving the larger areas of your picture, like the background white, and filling these areas in with watercolor paint at the very end. You can see here how I'm filling in my grassy area with green watercolor paint, and I'm using sunset colors to watercolor the background. Thanks for watching and please show your support by subscribing to my channel and checking out my other videos. I have a ton of super cool art tutorials on this channel. Hope to see you soon.